What's a library in the 21st century? Uh, this was a question we actually had to spend years thinking about because what we heard coming from the students and the faculty was, you know, things like uh, we want a high technology library, we want a technology sandbox, we, you know, these types of things where it was like, oh, I don't even know what that is, you know, much less what goes in it or how to support it. So what we really had to do was go back to first principles about libraries, right? What is, what's the essence of a library? And the first thing you have to ask is, as well, is it about the books? Well, the answer is no. It's, we've never been in the book business, right? It's not what defines us. Uh, information technology, the carriers of information, you got to go do is go back and you start with, you know, stone tablets, play tablets, then we go to papyrus, then we go to the codex, and finally the modern book. And there's this little tiny sliver of IT out on the end, you know, that's like the last, you know, 30 years of history, mm -hmm. right? So the scope of a library is spanning thousands of years, many different formats, things that have changed civilizations and the conversations around politics, economics, the grand problems of society, it's never been about books. So a library is definitely not books, <laughs> right? So what is it, right? Well, it's the tools of knowledge creation. It's about what are those tools that we can provide that, that activate research, study, investigation, right, that allow us to build, that allow the researchers, the students to build and to learn. And now that's gone to things like digital media, to big data, uh, visualization, you know, all of these types of compute-based tools, right? But that's only the last 30 years of history. So as a library now, libraries change slowly. So we're at this inflection point where we say, how do we adapt from the IT, the technology that's ruled for the last thousand years in books, to this new technology, right, of the compute-based stuff? And what does a building look like now? We don't design our buildings for books anymore. That was the technology that we used to design them for. How do we design them for the technology that is now present for the tools of knowledge creation? All of these elements that now make the library as a research component of why it's always been valuable, transfer that to the technology program, it becomes an incredi incredibly powerful tool. Um, so what we got the opportunity to do was to completely reimagine a facility from the ground up to say what would a uh, advanced technology rich facility look like? One that was defined not by the characteristics of what we're doing today or even in two years or four years, mm -hmm. but is able to live and grow and breathe with technology over the span of decades. Right? Things we can't even imagine today. And say, well, that means you know, a certain type of technology backbone, a certain type of uh, adaptability in the floors, the walls, the ceilings, um, something that can cycle in a facility as quickly as technology does because what we're trying to do is stay on the leading edge of technology and how it applies to research, not you know what it was five years ago. So I'd say the key thing that we got today was a platform for adapting to technology cycles and having an actual research platform from which we can uh, work over time as technology shifts and as research shifts and to keep up with where the campus is at as it's doing that took care of the book problem, put those all in the automated retrieval system, a book bot, so that we could uh, have everything contained down there in you know a, a 50 by 100 by 100 box that holds two and a half uh, million volumes or two million volumes, so that we don't have to worry about those in the spaces. And now we have the, the whole space volume of the building open to do whatever we want to with as far as the people that use it and the collaboration and how we're going to you know use the research program and things like that to create this idea of these black box rooms. All the infrastructure is open, access flooring, open ceilings, uh, all the equipment we can move dynamically. If we want to change the room, we don't have to move ceiling tiles, we don't, especially don't have to do core drilling, anything like that. We just lift up, change some clips, and move it around, right? So that on a, a daily, a weekly, monthly, a yearly basis, we can adapt the room to whatever researchers come up with, whatever they want to do in the classroom, whatever the students are doing. This becomes basically just an enabler for their imagination, and rather than a you know, physical limit. There's no space like this on campus, nothing, except for a theater over on the other side of the campus, and they use that for performances. So this is the theater for research and for teaching. So the question is, what's a library in the 21st century? Uh, this was a question we actually had to spend years thinking 